I'm about to tell you the most important strategy in tennis. The only one you really need to know. So sit down, relax, and let Karu here make tennis less complicated than it needs to be. If you are new to My Tennis HQ, we do tennis lessons, racket reviews, practices with pro players, and tennis content you won't find anywhere else. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button. What's up everyone, Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And today we're gonna talk strategy. And the one strategy that in my view is the most important one. Before we begin, I just wanna say welcome to all of our new subscribers. We had a great month, like over five, I think maybe 6,000 subscribers in the last 28 days. So welcome, thank you for subscribing. Um, we truly appreciate that. But let's go right to it. Strategy. What is the strategy I'm talking about? <laughs> I've said this a million times in lessons with my players, with you know competitive players that I work with, and the most important strategy that you can have on a tennis court is just be there. You never, never give up, and you're there. Doesn't matter how bad things are going. Doesn't matter if that day is the worst day in your life playing tennis, you have to be there. You have to show your opponent you're there, you're there, there to compete, and you will not lose that match. They will have to win it. What inspired me to talk about this strategy, and I say strategy in quotes because it's not really a strategy, it's a mindset, um, was of course the Australian Open final. Uh, what Rafa had to overcome to win that match, two sets down, you know, lost 40, 3-2 down in the third set to go down a break. He loses that, that game. He, he's most likely done and loses the match. But he never let up, never gave up. Always showed Daniil that he was going to be there. And Daniil had to close the match. Otherwise, Rafa would be there um, to turn that match around if, if he could. He, he didn't know if he was going to do it. No one knew. Uh, but he had to believe that he could and he had to believe um, he had to show his opponent that belief now I understand there's a ton of factors that play into that being able to you know, obviously keep the ball in physically uh, be able to to fight the entire match uh, be able to move your feet uh, and just in general being at a certain level in your tennis journey like this is not the strategy for someone who's can barely keep the ball in I uh, can barely like replicate their stroke. I'm taught this is again for, for players who are competitive. I like to teach people who are competitive um, already and are you know trying to you know win their league match or their whatever, right? Um, and I understand that that is difficult. But if you can have that mindset, then we can work towards that uh, in practice and practice matches and obviously in actual matches. And of course, for you to be able to be there, your fitness level needs to be good. You need to work out and you need to hydrate properly. And for that, I use AminoCo products. AminoCo helps you maintain peak performance with the help of targeted amino acid blends. Their science-backed supplements help you increase peak strength and endurance levels during tennis training, reduce fatigue and dehydration, and enhance mental clarity and concentration. All things you need if you wanna be there the entire match. If you wanna give this a go, we have a link down below. You can read about their research and make a decision if this is the right product for you. I really love it, I highly recommend it. I will also be giving one of this for free. All you gotta to do to enter this giveaway is leave a comment down below. So thanks again for AminoCo for sponsoring the video. Let's go right back to it. Now, something that I remind my players very often and something that I had to remind myself when I was playing is that tennis is such an up and down sport that we often have no idea what's going on. The balls are just going out. We're just missing. We're just kind of like losing our minds about it because like what, like what am I doing wrong? And sometimes that lack of confidence can really bring us down. And there's this like fallacy in, in, in thought process that like we always have to be playing our best to win matches right and I think what the big four has shown us throughout the years is that um, the, the, they were able to win a lot of matches when they were weren't playing their their best uh, when they were beatable that day obviously when they're playing their best they're the best but when they're not they could be beatable and they were able to still pull through a lot of those matches. And that's something that I try to tell my players all the time. I'm like, yes, we work on all these things. We're always trying to, to you know, fine tune 
our strokes and feel good and hit the ball well and hit the ball with quality. But there is going to be a point in a match, there's going to be a point, um, or maybe an entire match, I just went through this with a student who like really couldn't shake the, the nervousness, nervousness off and just played a bad match the entire match. But regardless, there's going to be tons of matches that we play or sets or points or days in practice that we're just going to be playing bad, plain and simple. And we have no idea why we're just going to be playing bad. And in those days, we just have to figure out what's working that day and give ourselves the best opportunity to, to win you know, again, the point, the points, the set, the match, whatever it is that you're playing. So for all of you out there that message me and email me and direct message me <laughs> on Instagram and all sorts of social media asking about strategy and tactics, can you cover this? I'm like, this is the one that matters. Now, obviously we get to a certain level and we can, you know, really fine tune strategy and, you know, at the highest level, they're able to execute that strategy over, like strategies over and over. Um, but at the lower level, even at the like high low level, meaning like futures and challengers, sometimes just that the ability of showing your opponent that you're going to be there, that you are, that they're gonna have to, they're already gonna step on court thinking, oh man, I'm playing Karu today. He's just like, he's going to make me grind. He's gonna make a lot of balls and it's going to be a battle. That already is a mental edge. That already is definitely a mental edge. So. If there's one strategy I want you to, to, to have, and again, strategy slash mindset here is I am there. I am here and I am here to, again, grind for as long as possible, even if I lose this. How can you achieve this mindset? You, you kind of have to hack your way into all of this, right? But there, I have a little checklist here of things that you can be doing a little bit more on the court to, to help you with, you know, that energy that you're going to have, like just showing that you're there. Okay. So positive talk, you know, obviously we get frustrated, but the more we, we, we let that consume us, um, you know, the more it brings us down. So good positive talk. With positive talk, positive body language, you know, if you're always like slouched over, walking around, like frustrated and throwing hands in the air all the time, and your opponent's gonna see that, he's gonna be like, I got him. Proactive footwork, so making sure, like even if you're nervous, if things are not going in, if your shots are just feeling weird that day, like the feet never stop. I'm, I'm active with my feet. I'm, you know, going after balls, I'm chasing balls, I'm trying to keep the ball in play as much as I can. So being proactive with your feet, super important. Just showing effort in each and every point, right? Not just like tanking, slapping balls, making a bunch of errors for no reason, just because you're frustrated and you're giving two, three games away. That's just the easiest way for, for you to lose. So be, you know, put, it, put in the effort. Not that every point is like, you know, matters like crazy, but you know, put in the effort, you know, be positive and all that stuff, put effort. Effort on every point, very important. And just bring that competitive, energized spirit to the court, right? Like you're there, you wanna be there, even though things sometimes are just not the way you want them to be, and you're not you know, playing a good match, you just kinda have that unbreakable spirit, right? Like how you would define Rafa, I think that would be the best definition for him, right? Unbreakable spirit. He's always been there through the bad, through the good. I mean, he's just been, I used to not be a real huge fan of Rafa because he was always beating Fed. Uh, and I'm a huge Fed fan, but you know, today, like as I'm older, I can so appreciate what he's done and how difficult it is. Like you just don't see that that often. That's that level of like strong spirited mindset, you know. And obviously, him and Novak and Feather, and, and obviously, I think even Murray fits in that category, have been the best at that. And I think we can learn so much from that, regardless of your level, regardless if you are, you know, an aspiring pro or just inspiring. Um, club champion, whatever it is, uh, I think that's the most important thing. So how can we train this? There's like on-court stuff and off-court stuff, right? So on-court, obviously consistency really important, uh, being able to keep the ball in play. I think consistency, do a lot of consistent, consistency drills, but where you're actually having to move, you're not just playing stationary because that's a little bit more uh, unrealistic. So keeping the ball in play, but also like being on the move and having to deal with movement. So, you know, you can play baseline games or neither player can hit a winner. I think that's that's always a great drill. 
um, and you just have to like grind yourself <laughs> to death there um, to be to play the 10 whatever um, that's a great drill just in general anything that requires movement and consistency and a good way to help with consistency is to pretend the court is, is smaller so make the court like 75 percent of its size and only play into that that area right so you have yourself a little bit more margin of error you can hit the ball bigger we really don't need to go for the lines too often and and keeping it simple right like i think um you know often and again i, I tell my my players often this like sometimes you can't do much with the ball all you can do is just send it back to the other side obviously we want quality but man sometimes you can't so just being okay that not every ball you're going to hit is going to be the best ball you hit sometimes it's okay to just manage manage remember i have that video i'm linking down below about the manager mindset that's where you need sometimes just keep the ball in play make the targets uh bigger and the court smaller so you you have some margin of error and that's going to help with consistency keeping the ball in play obviously footwork and fitness and conditioning having stamina to to withstand long matches and long points super important so you've got to be able to you know do off court training and just feel like you're physically when when you feel like you're physically in a better shape than your opponent it's already a huge edge obviously nutrition drinking the right supplements so you got to approach the, the game very holistically right like it's not just oh my forehand and backhand is good therefore i win it's a it's it's a combination of lots of things on and off the court breathing it's also important like you'd be surprised how many people are actually bad at breathing you know making sure i like to grunt because when you grunt you exhale and then you have to inhale and it's just like a, a repeatable uh, breathing pattern uh, so very important to be able to breathe and just in general training your mind to accept that there are some days you're going to be playing like crap and that you are still going to be able to grind and it's like okay today's a grind day we're going to try to grind for a win and again show my opponent that i'm here i'm here to compete regardless of how bad how poorly i'm playing uh, or how well i'm playing doesn't really matter and therefore um, i'm going to make your life more difficult and just by doing that you might be able to start winning more matches so there you have it the secret uh strategy that's helped you know me win a lot of matches uh over the years uh, again it's not secret but sometimes again the sim simplest things um are usually the most most effective and i think you know just having that mindset is so so important um and much more important than any of your strokes and again if you at a certain level already that you're playing some quality tennis so uh try that you know for the next few times around the court i think he it will help you tremendously and let us know in the comments below if this is already something you do if this is something you struggle with i'd love to see it in the comments what do you struggle with um when trying to apply that strategy so we can maybe cover in, in future videos and before we go again if you want to support the channel we got a, several links down below we got a free training guide that will be linked down below uh we got you know the minoco and all the other links that help the channel if you make any purchase purchases uh with those links it helps us so we truly appreciate that uh visit my tennis hq sign up for a six love newsletter which is really really good uh, and make sure you subscribe because we've got some things cooking that are going to be very very cool uh, that we're going to launch soon so click click that like button subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one